First of all, I'd like to say, acknowledge the truth and honors of this country, past and present, um, and their ancestors as well. As you, as you can see, the, the ceremony that, that we form, and that's, that's the water, water where, where we come from, where we come from is the the water, so every time when the wet systems come and the waters come, waters flood, floods all the uh, flooded, you know, you can see the floods every time the, when the wet systems come and the floods go everywhere. And that's where, that's where the song has been um, come. The Golare. Gulare, <laughs> As you can see, all these paintings and all that. Yeah. With that couple, very, very, very knowledge for us, for my clan, and for all, all the people around, the, around in this, in our region. Kapo. Yeah. And the next one, that song, you heard about, that's the. Borotje, Borotje, Lokana no kanda no nena no malai, te namu namalai, yo, jundor koru no kanda, oru koru no kanda, yo, no nena Borotje kanda lakana, aljana, you want to explain something? To you? <laughs> anyway, that's the Borotje. What what you heard the last song, you know, swell, all the um. The bad feelings, whether from past and from now present, and swell all the different knowledge, different, different knowledge and different people, to to so we can come together as one, one as one people, 
in the in in the why how we could make the art industry better for our organization and for our benefit. To stand and to show the culture in the world through through the art world. Through the art world. Art is something telling very, very deep knowledge. As you can see the knowledge now is the patterns, but there's something telling inside there. Telling something we don't know, and you don't know it. And everyone is not know about, you know, what's, what's in there. Paddings telling something about the land, the heritage, the sacred sites, the waterhole, everything. Everything in the environment that, that what your law or everyday people's own. In, in the way how their ancestors has been called and being there for a long time and being there for thousands of years. And we're still cont continuing those, the culture. We need to still explore the culture to the world and to the uh, non-indigenous people so that people who are, we are today from this in, whether we are Australians or, or Pacific, or any other people who are, we're not a different. We're not a different. Through the culture, we, we come as one, one people and one nation as well. As well. But your own nation has been, Aboriginal nation has been here for thousands of years. And our, our customs, our law, our everything has been here for thousands of years. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Diane Moon. I've worked here at the gallery in the role of Indigenous uh, curator of Indigenous fibre art for some years. I'd just like to um, introduce our guest today. And um, the artist responsible for all these works is uh, Gwenbi Gunambar. And Dinamalo Gumana has sung to us. He's um, the chairman of the Bukularangay Mulka Centre. Um, who organised um, the exhibitions and the artwork. And Will Stubbs, who's uh, worked at Bukalangay for over 20 years um, in a very special role, responding to the needs of artists and um, inspiring and listening to them. And I think um, the results um, are quite clear to everybody that this work comes out of um, an inspired um, situation where the artists are free to explore and be creative and invent and um, others are there to facilitate that happening and I'm very, very pleased that the gallery's been part of that um, process and um, in APT5 we had Jumbawa Murrawilly's work, we featured his work and collected quite a lot of his work for the gallery collection and he's been the mentor for Goinby and uh, for Yinamala and they were the young artists not so long ago but um, now, as we can see, they've matured and they've taken um, their roles further than anybody ever expected um, in the way of experimenting and um, reinventing uh, their culture and their art. But I'd like to um, hand over to Will to ask some questions of the artist, just to stimulate discussion. Yeah, um, thanks, Diane. So happy to be in this room you know, and a long history of working with these artists. And Diane sold me my first bark painting in 1991 when I was a snotty little lawyer, <coughs> tie kicker customer walking through the Manningrida Art Centre where she was the queen. <laughs> and uh, I was haggling over the price. It's quite embarrassing to remember. <laughs> um, and I still have the bark painting. It's the most beautiful thing I, I, I've probably got still. Um, and this room is probably the best that we've ever looked as an art centre. I think this is a high point for me to walk into this room and see a genius properly presented by a tasteful uh, and experienced curator in the best uh, public institution in the country um, with a program, a public program policy that fills a room I'm used to talking to 12 people, 
sorry, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and a place that belongs to the people and believes that art is, uh, you know, is for all of us and encourages and goes out and gets people to come in and, and be a part of it. It's so exciting and what a thing to see, um, you know. Anyway, that's, and so thanks to Diane and um, Gina and Chris and uh, the collectors, Richard and Harriet and Ross Bonthorn, who've lent their works back to this show, but mainly to my boss, Yinamala, um, and Gunbi's boss as his Junga uh, cultural leader from the opposite moiety of the Irite. And but particularly thanks to Goinby for uh, you know his genius and innovation. We spoke before we were going to try. There's so many unexplainable, mysterious, confusing things about this art and Yolngu culture and the way it interfaces with Anglo culture. But we thought we'd try and talk about songs because um, you've heard songs. Um, but songs are law and songs are in the paintings. And these are sort of motherhood statements that don't make any sense to anyone until we um, have a, a way to unpick that. But from our own perspective, the Bible, in my view, was probably a set of songs because before writing, people had to hold it in their head. And if you have to hold things in your head, it just, make sense to make it part of a story and for it to rhyme and or be a song and then someone wrote it down and then a few hundred years someone went hey you know how we wrote that down I've just found out you can write new stuff and it gets worshipped the same way the old things were and then you're into another section of human life but for me the impressiveness of the Bible now is to think that it was held in many heads over many millennia and passed down and probably too big to hold in one head. So probably a form of a collective where each people had responsibility for different aspects of it as it is in Yongo. And for me, it's no more impressive to be written down. In actual fact, that's the cheat where you write it down than someone without that wisdom, knowledge, experience, depth to hold these songs in their head like you've seen Yinamala does. Um, you know, can just pick it up and read it and hand it around. It actually is a sort of a consumerist way of acquiring wisdom writing in one sense. I'm not setting up an us or them, but it's a good time for us to think about songs. Yeah. I mean, was that a question? <laughs> <laughs> No, um, I think what uh, what what um, Will was saying about you know the song songs when we sang all tight in in the land and also in the um, in the painting as well as I said before and. That's about Moiti, DJ and Dua can sing about all um, the environment. You know, um, Manike, because that's the song cycle that's been go around, around, and we still maintain that we still <coughs> sing about example like this particular uh, patterns. Oh, this is salt water. And, and then also, um, as you can see the shapes, that's salt water. But when you go to look at another one, just behind, on that, where the diamond is and all that, that's, that's salt water. I mean, fresh water come and they mix 
come together and they mix together. And now it's like like Prakish, Prakish water. So so any so all those manika, all those song has been gone. That's that's how we are today, all people we telling through song. We telling the story through painting and we're telling story through tense and we demonstrate as well all those piece and piece stuff that we um, managing or to 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 demonstrate like water fish uh, turtle so all those so that's all, that's about the song 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 lines that it's telling about something this it's really hard without uh, across languages mm. so when people you point to this and say salt water people think that means all salt water mm. so this is the, the world is in two halves Everything in the world has an identity, has a pattern, has a song, everything. So that's the first bit to get your head around. This is a system that covers everything. So it threads through like lace, the identity of everything in creation. And all of these things are in a particular relationship with everything else. So you can start to imagine, and everything is in two basic divisions, to Irija and Doa, but then is divided again and again into clan and to mal and to region and to guruto so that you end up every single element so a lorikeet or a rainbow lorikeet is a linderich sung by ridijong but a collared lorikeet is um um yeah na yong na yakun nu malang wo wain I've forgotten the name for it now. Um, <laughs> it's a different name, but it's sung by the Dadui. Um, so I'm just falling short there on my cultural thing. But we don't want to be anthropological, but um, every single person in this room would have an identity their moiety, their clan, their mulk, and it would actually if we waved a wand and you all suddenly discovered your identity, there'd have to be a lot of shuffling because some of you would be standing next to people you're not meant to be standing next to. And there would be magnetic <laughs> pulses that would shift the, the, um, the crowd. And the fact that you all can stand next to whoever as if you had no sacred identity is a sign of your, you know, a paucity in your life. You know, <laughs> and, that you are also unaware of how you are related to each other. But in your own culture, you don't deny that you're related to each other. Science tells us we are related. And then culture and society denies it at every step and insists that, uh, on having an organisation that is totally based around genetics so that we have, in Western culture, half-sisters and step-brothers and rubbish like that, which in almost all acknowledging the fact of relationship and then denying any role for genetics so that you are related to a maggot, you are related to Venus as strongly as you are related to what a DNA tester would tell you you're related to. So this is a hard to convey without sort of interrupting and saying this is Dalwangmo salt water from the Irija Moeti for a particular estate called Garapra. It's not just salt water. And when it meets the fresh water, now when it can can be, yeah, it's meeting fresh water from uh, Guluji at Kangan, from the Irijamoyet again, from the Dalwango clan again. So those two, yeah, and I'm just sort of interposing there because there's so much ignorance in non-indigenous society about Yongo culture and such a lack of curiosity about it and uh, such an obstacle to start explaining it that 
I um, get frustrated to come to events where Yinamala is saying what I just said, but no one's hearing it, and everyone walked away thinking, well, there's not much to it really, is there? Um, so I, that's my end of my intervention. <laughs> well, we, we're coming to the end of our time, but I'd just like to ask uh, Gwenvi to say something about himself as an artist and something about your history uh, we were talking about before, which is all really very interesting and practical. <coughs> How are you? How are you? In this morning, <laughs> good thinking. I like to privilege telling, oppressing myself. Um, the work that I painted, the found, the pumpy locks, the new, new, new of this sea, and clutching, and I walked to the. Um, so for, from the Old Testament, like from the New Testament tree. So new means new ideas and steps are focusing and uh, the visions. You know, this, this, I used to be you know, in the first, on uh, the degree instrument player. And that was the first step in there. And then I chopped to, chopped to um, maybe 12 years back, a building site. And I was a building and housing for the 12 years. Then I walked out, then I jumped out, building the arts. Instead of you know, building uh, Pala, Wanga, then I'm making a, I'm the arts, and I can find um, different difference of sort of um, materials found. You can see that the, the materials already seen that the tanks, water tanks. That's that's our our community. That's the piece tank, all water tank. And that's a couple of mines stuff. Rubber, Canberraville. Canberraville. The rubber is they said takes all mines, and it's a piece of um, the wall. Yeah, it's something amazing that I see, and I'm keep on moving forward to collecting all the new, um, more stuff. There's the more stuff coming in. Other other things. More ideas. There's more ideas, more visions, more dreams. It's here already. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's all for me. <laughs> yeah. Like to know what tools you use, Gwenby. <laughs> ah, Very simple. Yep. The tools I have used for the tanks are uh, angle grinder. <laughs> Just as simple as that. Yes. Angle grinder, <laughs> and those the rubbers. I uh, use those in a Stanley knife. Stanley. Those, those two private tools. Yeah. Yeah. Stanley yeah. knife. Yeah. And it's Done by grinder, angle grinder. On your left. Yeah, on your left. <laughs> so this one's naturally, naturally it's a wood. So I'll put add it up, like put the sand, sand up. Sand, yeah. So where do you get that sand from? The sands come from the from the Garapara, which is with this nah, piece of painting country. Kapo, country. If you were to see the map um, of where Gwendy lives and works, um, he's a very long way even from Yurikala. It's about four hours if you were driving by truck. Three hours. Three hours, Three yeah. Hours. So um, it's um, 
quite remote in our terms, but it's in the middle of exactly where he needs to be for his inspiration and the materials that he uses. Um, I think we have to um, finish now. And I'd just like, um, maybe Yinamala, if you want to comment on that conveyor belt piece that's over there, um, the concept of um, you know, the mines having been in the community for so long, taking your earth away, making money from it, and how um, now that's returned uh, with the ochre patterning on the top. Did you want to say something? Um, yeah, um, as you can see, the Canberra Belt, you know, uh, taking away all the uh, dirt, the minerals and all that, and and now today, like Goinby, he always found those piece and piece stuff like the Canberra Belt because he. He tried to put his art into on that can be felt because he's thinking about like you know because um, the hoka and all the colors now coming from the land and you know all those things coming from the land and now going to be what what going to be was doing is is try to put you know because all those when we when the dirt's all the going out to the exploited, exploited in other countries, you know, and makes money, and now today he putting on top of that, like the artwork, like you know, because all those, all those, um, the minerals and all that come from the land, see, so therefore we putting those, all those paintings back to. Two hundred uh, again fell. So, yeah, that's why he's told is That's why he's thinking is he tried to put those back, you know, rather than bring the monies back and earn the money, but we're putting something in back, two hundred. And maybe that's how the the red hawker and all those other colors as well been covered. So. Yeah. Well, I think we'll finish with that beautiful concept and um, thank you to our artists and to Will and thank you everybody. Thank you.